Hey, wake up. It's 2007. Just kidding, everyone. Hello, my name is Philosopher, and this is a blast from the past, isn't it? I always wanted to do a machinima when I was young. Look at me now, Mom. But the year is 2021, and with more viruses attacking your body than your dad's belt after a bender, and with the new Decepticon Omnicon trying to take over the world, I think we're going to be inside for another year. Bad news for party people, but with someone with no life. <laughs> It's the best thing ever since Halo Infinite just came out. What better way to wait until Doomsday happens is with an incredibly hard achievement called Headhunter, or Lasso for long-term fans, where you must complete the campaign with all skulls on and on Legendary. No easy feat. But we got all the time now, so bring it on. For this video, I decided that I'm not going to break up the videos into smaller ones, but make one long video and put timestamps in for the certain campaign missions, because I think it would be a lot easier for people who just want to see a certain level. And we're not really doing anything in the open worlds besides collecting a few Spartan cores. Uh, keep in mind, uh, video quality might change a little bit. Steam Labs likes to change my settings for when I'm recording, so do be advised that quality might dip a little bit. Also, I'm just starting out on YouTube, so if you give me a big like and subscribe, that would be super helpful. You can also watch the full playthrough on my Twitch. I know a lot of you already saw my playthrough there, but give a follow there as well, pretty please. Also, leave a comment, tell me what you like and didn't like from this video. Let me know. And if you don't like anything from this video, try disliking my video, fucker. But for those who do like my video, the Master Chief will come down and give a gentle kiss on the forehead for good luck while you try to complete this achievement. So first, let's talk about the Skulls and what they do. Boom Skull, Double Explosion Radius. Cowbell Skull, Acceleration from Explosions is increased. I Want to Be Your Daddy Skull, Rare Combat Dialogue Becomes More Common. The Blind Skull, Hudden Weapons Do Not Display on Screen. Catch Skull, Enemies Throw and Drop More Grenades. Fog Spell, Disables Motion Tracker. Famine Skull, Weapons Dropped by Enemies Have Half the Ammo They Normally Would. The Black Eye Skull, Your Shields Only Recharge with When You Melee Enemies. Thunderstorm Skull, Upgrades the Rank of Most Enemies. Mythic Skull, Enemies Have Increased Health. Grunt Birthday Party Skull, Grunt Headshots Lead to Glorious Celebrations of Confetti and Cheer, and the Bandana Skulls Grants Unlimited Ammo, Grenades, and Remove Equipment Cooldown. Now, some of these Skulls cancel each other out. For instance, the Blind Skull cancels out the Fog Skull, and some just don't matter, like I Want to Be Your Daddy does nothing to affect gameplay, as well as Grunt's Birthday Party. Fun, but doesn't affect us at all. Famine Skull does nothing because we have the Bandana Skull on that gives you unlimited ammo. So the main skulls that we're actually playing with that will affect the game is Boom, Cowbell, Blind, Catch, Black Eye, Thunderstorm, Mythic, and Bandana. So you're really just playing with 8 skulls. Now for the first level, Warship, Grappacon, Grappacon, I think is how you say it. Anyways, take the left side up and we'll encounter our first enemy, the Grunts. Now, with the Thunderstorm Skull on, all the Grunts are now Grunts Ultras. They're the highest rank, and they have an Overshield. Fun. And with the Mystic Skulls, these guys are, take a little bit to kill, actually. They're no pushovers. And remember, with the Black Eye Skull on, you have to melee enemies to get back your shield. It gets tough with the Blind Skull on, because there's no way to tell where your health is. But, if you have headphones, there is a sound cue for when your health is depleted, so keep that in mind. Also, for the Blind Skull, you get no crosshairs. This is easily uh, counterable. You just put something on the middle of your screen, like tape, uh, something, or if you have a fancy monitor, you can just turn on the uh, crosshairs on, on that. But then I immediately oh. die. This might be tougher than I thought, but no fret, my fearful watchers, because we do have the Bandana Skull on. This is the single most important skull that we have. We have unlimited ammo, grenades, and equipment. This will make their challenge so much easier. So here, I just grenade spam them to oblivion. Also, switch to the Sideman pistol because it's a workhorse. It's accurate and puts out high damage if you can headshot them. Now, I'm going to give you the biggest secret to completing this achievement. Only top tier MLG Pro players knows this and they won't tell you. 
but I will. I uh, just kidding. It's just take your time. There's no rush. You know, clear out the rooms, move up bit by bit. If you need to retreat, retreat. There is no rush whatsoever. And you have unlimited ammo, so you can sit there for days. All right. Uh, the more you push up, the more you'll get frustrated. After beating the grunts, pick up the monster just because it has high output, and but you can use whatever. It doesn't matter till later on when we get the rocket launcher in this level. After going through the first door, we'll find our first brute. He will charge at you as, like, well, a dumb brute. But using the monster, just keep backing up and aim for the head. This will stun him and give you a few more shots in. Now, the fighter brutes, they will one-shot you if they hit you. So keep them at a distance, use grenades. If you stick them, it's usually a one-hit kill. So just stay back and deal with him. Also, with the grenades, we have the boom skull on it. And that doubles the radius, and the Kelbell accelerates the explosions, which just mean that the enemies will go flying. The next room will have grunts to the right, so shoot the fusion coils, and that should take care of them. Now, if you're low on health, the best way to gain health is to grapple onto an enemy. This will stun them as you get a hidden, and you can simply grapple away out of danger. It's honestly a lifesaver for this playthrough, and this is what I highly recommend you do if you need to get health back instead of just rushing out just grapple onto someone hit them and grapple away the next room will be three brutes with weapons so stay back and pick them off here i grenade spam them just to see if anyone's hiding i find that enemies really like to hide especially the elites them cowards here i die but this game has the weirdest and shittiest checkpoint system i've ever seen and i honestly don't still don't understand how it works but from my conclusion i believe you got to have full shields for it to give a checkpoint because whether there's no enemies at all anywhere or there's an enemy right in front of you it doesn't seem to matter when you, when you get the checkpoint and when it's clear it won't say but here for instance there's an enemy right in front of me and it saves just fine so i don't know and it's the hardest part of this challenge is the goddamn save system you'll see what i mean later on in this video once you get to the lift area, there will be some jackals, and when the elevator comes down, there will be a few brutes. So just stay back, pick them off, chuck some, one or two grenades, and you'll be fine. And one of the brutes will have a rocket launcher. Now, pick up the rocket launcher. This is going to carry you throughout the entire campaign. The rocket launcher is essential for this, and it's by far the most useful weapon, besides from the sentinel gun. But we don't get that till a bit later on. And the best way to use the rocket launcher is to aim pretty close to them. Don't aim at them directly. Use that blast radius and they'll just go flying. It's 10 times easier than just trying to kill them outright. If there's cliffs or walls, they'll go flying. And honestly, it's the most fun I have had in years playing the game. Just watching them fly is the greatest thing I've ever seen. Once you get the rocket launcher, this level is not bad at all. There will be some enemies on top here, so just keep an eye on them, for they will chuck some grenades down below. In the corridor, there will be a turret set up with a few enemies, so just blow them up. Now for the main room. Stay on top and let the rockets do the work. And it's weird, a lot of the brutes carry rocket launchers, but very few ever use them. You have to be a set distance away, I think. And they won't shoot you when you're close. But I have no idea how they work. It's more or less random, I find. Which is fine for us, because it makes it easier. Now, once you pull the lever, enemies will spawn on the bottom left and right. As well as on the top. So just stay on the high platform and kill them from above. Once they're cleared from the top, you can shoot the energy power coils from up top. So you don't have to go underneath. Once you destroy one, more enemies will spawn. Take your time and deal with them. Once you destroy both, pull the lever, and it's time to make a mad dash out. Rocket the grunts and move forward. Once you get to the main hall, hide behind this pillar for a sec until the explosion goes off. Just because some of the debris has hit me and killed me. So it's better just to be safe, give it a second, let the explosion happen, and then move on. Head down the elevator and dash towards the exit. This part doesn't take much effort, just don't fall or get stuck like me. Remember, the grapple doesn't have a cooldown, so use it frequently. At the bottom, there's a bunch of enemies, but I choose to ignore them. Just fly right by to complete the first level. 
Congrats, only 14 more levels to go. The next level, Foundation, as soon as you start, there will be a phantom that drops off our first elite. These guys are no pushovers. And even with the rocket launcher, they are not easy to propel as our brute friends. So just take it easy. When they get low on health, they do go invisible. So something just to keep in mind. Push forward and try to bop the grunts off the ledge. It's a lot easier than trying to kill them outright. Another phantom will come down and drop some more brutes. Watch out for the phantom cannons because they do hurt. Next, get on top of the pillar and rain hellfire down on the poor grunts as another phantom will appear with more brute. Once all the enemies are dealt with, swing across the bridge and get to the end of the bridge and then take care of the enemies. Once you pass them, you will enter the next room. You can grapple to the grav lift, passing all the baddies to the next area. Stay back and use the rocket launcher. You can also grapple on the support beams and shoot from above. High ground equals winner people. Low ground is for losers. Next, find the weapon and figure out what's going on. Uh, there, there'll be some dialogue. Take the lift up and deal with the grunts and make it to the next bridge. There will be another cutscene and then make our way to the next area. Let the weapon make the bridge and when the bridge is being made, grunts will pop up with the bridge. So don't move across until it's completed. Now here's another big tip. Now we should have gotten shock grenades by now. This technique I call shock and awe. I'm very good with coming up with names people. First throw the shock grenade, which is the shock. This will stun the enemy and then rock it, the awe effect. I'm pretty sure I'm the only one in existence to figure out this technique. Uh, so that is trademark by the way. After massacring everyone, continue on till the weapon brings up another bridge. Again, grunts will pop up with the bridge. And at the end of the section, there's a turret. So just make sure to rocket him as you move ahead. The next area will have a sniper brute on top. So just be careful. Snipers are an absolute bitch to deal with. So always try to take them out first. Just because they'll snap onto you and will kill you like pretty much instantly. Take the lift up and you'll find Spartan Bonita? Bonita Stone, which enhanced shield cores. This will be extremely important for our run. The next big area, take the left or right to the high ground and start sniping. There will be two sniper jackals on the left and right hand side, so take them out first. Seriously, they are not to be messed with. I fucking hate these guys. Next, get the lift activated. We need a power seat. Grab the power seat and make your way to the lift. Power it on and and the weapon says someone is already coming down. We have arrived at our first boss battle. Timornius. Timornius? Tremornius. The little bitch. I am also going to be raiding these bosses on difficulty. One grunt being easy and five grunt being the hardest. Now, Termonius has two weapons. First one is the Hydra. It's fucking pinpoint accurate and will kill you instantly. And when you get too close, he also has a shoddy. So this makes him extremely fucking annoying. You also bring two jackal bodyguards down with him just to be a bit more aggravating. Now the first thing to do in this boss fight is to take care of the jackals. Here we'll do the shock and awe technique. Once you're able to play, throw a spark grenade, and once they're stunned, hit them with a rocket. That should take care of them. Uh, in this boss battle, your grapple is your friend here. Just, you have to stay relatively low. If you go too high, he will snipe you right out of the air with that hydra. With the rocket launcher, aim for the side of the ground, and this will send him flying. I call this technique the rocket juggle, because... You're, you're juggling him in the air. Very good, I know. And that's probably the biggest trick for this fight. As soon as he lands, hit him again. And as soon as he goes flying up, reload and keep on doing that. But even with this technique, it's still no easy feat. This is, I want to say, one of the hardest bosses in the game. And he's right at the beginning. At the back of the wall, there's also a kneeler you can grab to deal with his shields a bit quicker. But the kneeler is really slow, and if you and if you stay out in the open too long, uh, he's just gonna kill you instantly. So be advised, you can do it like that, but the kneeler is not the best option. So pretty much stay behind the pillars and circle around. When he gets close, use the rocket and propel him back to the other side of the room. That's honestly probably the best way to defeat this boss. He also has a massive lunge attack that reaches across the entire room and it will kill you pretty much instantly. It's honestly very annoying and if you try to grapple away from that attack, the grapple is way too slow so he will catch you and if you do juggle him, he can shoot rockets in the air. It's just another thing to keep in mind. 
if you need more health, grapple onto him once he's on the ground. He will put up his guard up, and he will let you get a hit in. But you have to get away very quick. Or, if you rocket juggle him, as soon as he lands, he stuns for a second, and that's when you would be able to hit him. You can also go underneath the level. Um, I didn't really do this too much, but he didn't seem to follow me down there, so I don't know if he does or not. At least on my attempts, I've never seen him down there, so if you need to like, clear your head or something, go down there and, and rethink. After numerous attempts, uh, it took me a long time to try and get this one, and I honestly thought this is where my challenge would end. But then, the Master Chief decided to bless me with his luck. For one rocket launch sent him flying, and he disappeared. I had no idea where he was. I, I, I looked at all around the map, and I, I still couldn't find him. Until I looked up to the roof. There, he was stuck in this pillar. And I couldn't believe it. Even my rockets wouldn't unglitch him. Except for the last one. But as soon as I rocketed him again, he died instantly. So I got extremely lucky here. Uh, if you can repeat this process and get him up there, that's that's great. But <laughs> I, I don't think it's, it's an easy thing to do. So if not, good luck. Just take your time, hide behind the pillars, use the rockets, use the shock grenade too, it will stun him. But I'm going to give him four prints. This guy is a bitch to deal with, and I would say one of the hardest bosses in the game by far. And with him defeated, we have completed level two. Now for the third level, Outpost Tormonius. Tormonius? Tormor I can't fucking say it. I can't say half these goddamn words. Anyways. We get to leave the facility for the first time and see Zeta Halo. On your way out, make sure to grab the Spartan Core. And for this level, which I still thought this was the second level, but no, it's its own level. All we have to do is clear off this outpost. Very simple. But there are a lot of enemies here, and there will be two phantoms that will come and drop off some enemies. But if you're quick enough, you can snipe them out of the air with the rocket launcher. Uh, the other big thing to worry about, sort of, kinda, is to the right of the building that you leave, there is a turret. So just something to be mindful of. Shoot a rocket, take it out. Well, the easiest way to do this is simply grapple to the top of the building, and even grapple on top of the, the infinity, or like the crash ship area. That way you have an outlook of the entire area, and all you do is snipe. Also behind the building will be another Spartan Core. Now for upgrades, we, I don't really do too much at all. If you guys want to upgrade everything, like all your equipment, feel free to. Um, I find it nothing else really mattered besides from the shield. And I did upgrade the grapple hook just to have the uh, shock when you grapple onto an enemy. But other than that, I, like, I didn't upgrade the drop wall. I didn't upgrade the thrusters. Uh, thrusters, its last ability does make you turn invisible for four seconds, which could be very useful just to get out of a pinch. But I never upgraded it. I feel like you don't need to, but if you're not as confident or you feel like you should, uh, by all means, go for it. But for me, it was just the... It was just the shield upgrades and the grapple, and that's it. Now get on top of the infinity and, and just like Ronald Reagan, bomb them to oblivion. Once all the enemies are clear, there is one more Spartan core underneath the, the landing dock. So make sure to pick it up before leaving the area. But with that, we completed the third area. Like really, nothing to it. Very easy. Just sit back and snipe them out. The next level is the tower. We are now in the open world aspect of Zeta Halo, and there's really not too much to do in the open world. I just collect some Spartan cores to upgrade our shields to the max, and that's it. We do need to capture one fob, and the only other thing I can think of, if you wanted to do it, I personally didn't do it on my run, is find the assassination missions where it has the upgraded sentinel beam. I know that does more damage, and there's an upgraded rocket launcher. I'm not too sure if the rocket launcher does do more damage. I know it tracks and that can help with the banshees later on, but I didn't do it so I, you don't really need to as well. And for the tower to unlock, we first need to capture an FOB. 
So cl the closest one is where we spawn, so we're just going to take care of that. We're going to sit on top of the mountain, snipe them down, and just like that we captured our first fob. And this is the only one you really need. Now I do do a little detour just to grab the two Spartan cores. One is on the left hand side near the cliff and the other is in the middle of the field on the way to the tower. These I pick up just to just to get them. Making our way to the tower I go from the left hand side there's like that hill hillish mountain area. I go up there there are watchtowers at the tower ironically uh, but they do have jackal snipers in them. So the first thing you want to do at the tower is take them out. And going up the hill, there will be some brutes and grunts behind you. Take them out. Now jump on top of the tower and just like Lee Harvey, start sniping them like JFK. None of the enemies can get you on top of here. So just take your time, take them all out. There are some marines in the front that you can save by ironically shooting a rocket at them. It will help free them. They help out a little bit, not too much, but it brings you some good karma, so you might as well. And then once you clear out all the enemies, start approaching the lift and check lock. He will shut down the lift, and it'll be like, no, 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 my security is, is too good, you know, you can't enter. So all we gotta do is go and turn the security off. Uh, take out the enemies, the door will unlock, uh, there'll be a few more guys inside. Just be careful entering, they'll chuck some grenades and tight corridors, right? And they will deal a little bit more damage to you. Just rocket the guys inside, turn on, turn off, I guess, the, the security switch. Then you'll have to go to the other side where there's like the platform and you're going to have to re-turn on the lift. Reinforcements will appear uh, in the phantoms at the edge of the tower, but if you turn it on, but if you turn on the grav lift quick enough, you can just go right on up. And skip them. Uh, once inside you get the threat detector from Hudson's equipment who may still be alive. We move forward. Uh, there's a few brutes and elites here. We got some grunts. Uh, the top level of the tower is the hardest. There's a few elites and two grunts I believe. So just be careful. Other than that there is another Spartan core here. So just make sure to grab it. We then find Griffin in the torture device. Checklock then appears and it's time for a second boss fight. Uh, for this boss fight, you want to use the threat sensor on top of where Griff Griffin is. This is just so if you shoot the rockets, it won't blow up. Also, it's it's kind of funny if you stick Checklock with the threat sensor and use a rocket launcher. The threat sensor won't go away. But if you have it on the ground, it will blow up if you shoot a rocket at it. Now, Chaklock, he turns invisible and has an energy sword. He also has a pulse rifle. And when you start off the fight, he'll always be on the right-hand side. You can continuously just grapple around the room. He can't really hit you. So you can just shoot rockets at him, uh, come down to reload and jump back up and rinse and repeat. Uh, but for me, I just did the rocket juggle. Just keep on shooting him. Let him go flying. Once he lands, shoot him again. Uh, rinse and repeat. Uh, you can also use the stun grenades on him. So if your health is low, you can shock him. He will get stunned. Grapple onto him. Give him a hit. And then grapple away. Uh, check luck is a lot easier than the first boss. It just takes a little patience. He'll get you probably a few times. Uh, you can also do the shock and awe combo. If he starts to charge... Uh, throw a shock grenade at him and that will stun him for a second but after that once chuck lock is beaten uh, that's level four i give check lock two grunts out of five he's he's not that bad once once you get in the routine he's he's pretty easy level five is excavation site moving across the bridge i took the first fob and you would think that once you captured it it would save right well you're wrong for some god knows what reason, it doesn't save whatsoever. And this is where I start to get pissed about the checkpoint system. So I had a great idea. I thought maybe if I captured the fob and ended the game, it would recognize that I have captured it. So I ended the game and restarted the game and loaded it in. I then got confused as to why I started all the way back at Outpost Termonius. I thought the game fucked up. I was also pissed that it didn't save when I captured the fob, so I said fuck it and I started to make my way to the excavation site. I Spider-Man all the way over to the excavation site so fast even Spider-Man would give me a thumbs up. Once I got to the site I was surprised to see enemies there for when you actually play the mission for the first time there's no enemies there at all. Feeling confused I made my way to the open cave waiting for a cutscene to happen. 
and nothing. I went inside and the door was locked. I thought I got hard locked out of the game. I tried end of the game and I started it back up. Still no cutscene and the door was still locked. I was pissed. I tried the button again and nothing. I thought of letting the enemies kill me to see if that would fix the problem. They hit me and they were doing no damage to me at all. That's when I figured out 200 IQ is right. I loaded the wrong game file. You see, I thought this bitch. achievement was any difficult. So I put it on easy, beat the game with all skulls on. Then I didn't realize it had to be on legendary. Whoops. So this file is the one of me beating it on easy. And you can't go back and complete the outpost. Feeling like an ass, I loaded the proper save file. And it did say my alpha, so you just have to get checkpoints after completing them just in the game and load back in if the checkpoints aren't popping up for you. I got a few more Spartan cores and finally made my way to the excavation site. Almost getting hit by the laser, I hurried inside, ignoring all the enemies down below and dealing with the ones inside, cleaning them out. Once I dealt with them, I headed outside to clean up the rest. This is where we're going to prepare for bosses, bosses, bases, bosses, the next boss here. In this corner, right beside the weapon rack, we're going to put as many fusion coils as we can here because after the cutscene, that's where we'll be standing. And so we can get in quite a bit of damage by doing this. No enemies will spawn in as long as you haven't activated the terminal. So take your time doing this. Grab all the fusion coils you can and start placing them in the corner. There's also a glitch I notice if you pick up one of the energies and there's another one beside it, one of them will disappear for some reason. I don't know why it happens. Uh, 343 doesn't like you to have fun maybe, but there is a way around it. If you grapple them to pick them up, the other one won't disappear, so you can pick up quite a bit more. There are a lot of fusion cores in this area. It's a bit of a hassle, but it's well worth it just for the damage you can put out. There are also purple fusion coils here. Just be mindful that when they explode, they shoot out energy and they can kill you. But there's only two or three of them and you can leave them out if you like. But I like living life on the edge, so I'm going to keep them in. After placing... I want to say about 30 fusion cores. I lost count after a bit, but look at it. So beautiful, so shiny, and listen to that sound. We can now activate the controls to the mining rig. Once we do, the two regulators will pop out of the ground and we'll have to destroy them. Rush to the first control and then grapple to the other side to activate the second one and then quickly get back inside. This will expose all the cores at once. The first thing you want to do on the right hand side of the drill is take care of the jackal snipe. You must take care of them first. There will be two that spawn on the cliff and two that spawns kind of towards the back of the mine. There should be four in total. Four or five. Once you deal with all the snipers you can head on top of the rig. And to my surprise some marines came to help me out. But you can destroy all the all the coils from on top of the mine. Head back inside and now it's time to face Bassus. Bassus has the gravity hammer and I'm pretty sure he doesn't have a sidearm. He also has a giant lunge attack making him equal to a COD player in multiplayer. The range is fuck and he will one shot you. You just want to get him in place and grapple over him. Try to get him as close as you can to the fusion cores. Even with 30 fusion cores, it still doesn't kill him. So head to the middle of the room, and in between the two doors, you can jump back and forth between them, and there's like a little ledge, and this will prevent him from attacking, and it will make him continuously go back and forth between the two doors. You can also grapple on the room, and he won't be able to get you. The way I did it was just rocket chuckle him, uh, keep pushing him back once he got close, push him back, and that's it. Uh, a lot of people think he's one of the hardest boss, but with all of the exploits and, and cheeses, I would say he's pretty easy. It only took me a handful of tries to actually complete it. For him, I'm going to give him three grunts. He is still annoying, and he will one-shot you with any attack, but with all the cheeses, it makes him not too bad. After defeating Bassus, we blow up the rig and we can make our way inside. The next level is the conservatory. After entering the mine, we discover another Spartan named Makovich, and she has the drop shield. Now, the drop shield is pretty useful, but I don't use it in my playthrough at all. But if you're a fan of it, feel free to upgrade it. It's just I find it wasn't necessary at all. Making your way through, go down the hallway and through the door. Rock at the entrance where enemies will be, and if you're quick enough, you can get them before they leave the door. The next room will have a few more elites and enemies, take them out, 
And the next area, shoot the fusion coil and make your way to the top or left side. Doesn't matter what side you take. You just clear out the room and grab the power C to open the door. More enemies will be on the other side, what a surprise. But in the back there is a jackal sniper, so just make sure to take him down. Once entering the big area, there will be another jackal sniper, take him down and get to the high ground. And in a shocking turn of events, we now have to grab two power seeds to open the door. It's a big challenge, but I think we're up for it. Once you grab one power seed, more brutes will come through the left and right side door, uh, pretty much in the middle. So just be mindful and stay back. Once you unlock the door, proceed down to a cutscene. I also love how your status effect and what weapon you're carrying carries throughout the cutscene. I find that's a really nice touch. Anyway, we meet the spawned Pyre and she asks for her help, but the flying octopus monkeys come and take her away. We head down after her and sure enough, more banish. Slowly make your way through the area. Not too many threats here. You do have the Velociraptors who are quick and dodge your attacks. I died ahead and start all the way back at the beginning. Like I said, these checkpoints are dog shit. And after dying one more time, I called it a day. Day 2, feeling refreshed, I start the game back up and make my way through the first part. There will be an elite in the back and a bunch of jackals. Head through the door and down the hallway. The door on your right will have two elites with energy swords and scatter shots. And in the far back will be one more elite with a few jackals. Send him to Kingdom Kong. Go through the door down and down the shaft we go. Also make sure you spend your upgrades, don't forget like me. Here, grapple to the top of the post and set your sights on the door. Two invisible elites will come through and just rocket them as soon as they enter. You can also keep chucking grenades up here, uh, but they will chuck grenades right back, so be careful while up there. And sometimes in this room, two grunts will appear, but if you're quick enough, they shouldn't spawn at all. Down the hall are a few more brutes, murder them and their families to get to the other side of, of the shield. On the other side, there's a lot of brutes, so just take your time here and just stay back. There is also a turret. Keep going and then get blown up by a rock. Fuck, no, don't do that. Make your way back, not getting shot this time. Once you get past the brutes in the next area, there won't be any enemies at all, so you can just swing your way to the next area. Cross the bridge and we'll get another cutscene. Now, I thought this part was gonna be hard because of the flying octopus monkeys. But here I found a super easy trick. I call it the seesaw jump. It's the best name I could come up with because I discovered it probably. Most likely not, but I can dream, right? Basically what you wanna do is in this room, there are two grapplers. And all you do is just go back and forth between them. Rocket the little fuckers in the air, reload on the ground and hop back onto the grappler. Rinse and repeat. You get it? Like a, like a seesaw up and down? No? Up, up and down you go. Anyway, after doing this part, it's super easy and it uh, took me one try, I'm pretty sure, which I was super shocked by. Grab the weapon and make your way through the next door. Here, you'll find the thruster on Theodore. Now, this is your last shield upgrade and I didn't use this one either. The last upgrade is great because it has a invisibility for four seconds which does help with the sentinels because they will lose you and enemies as well. But I didn't use it at all. But if you guys have used it, let me know down in the comments how, how it works. And once you're done, the next area in the doorway will be a jump pack group. Take care of them. And the next area is the hardest part by far in this game so far. This room, there are two chief brutes with turrets and they are fucking annoying. Now this took some time to figure out how to do this properly, but as the god tier gamer I am, I have figured out how to do this. One of the brutes is gonna be extremely aggressive and push towards you and the other just camped back like a COD player. So here's how you do it. Well, two ways. You can stay in the room before where the chiefs are and just snipe them. They won't be able to come through the doorway. I saw him once come through there, but other than that, I never saw him uh, be able to enter the door. So if you have a sniper, you can snipe them. A sentinel gun works really well and just beat them to death. It takes a while, but 
that's one way to do it. Or the second option is I grappled all the way past them to behind the elevator and I stayed on the right hand side. Uh, the first chieftain will always come towards you, so then you can just rocket juggle him. You can push him all the way back against the wall. And once he gets close again, rinse and repeat. Uh, and once he's dealt with, the other one is pretty easy to deal with. Any of these bosses or mini bosses are hard when there's two, but as soon as you get down to one, it's extremely easy. And I know these aren't proper bosses, but I'm gonna give them four grunts. I died a lot. Easily one of the hardest parts of the game so far. And this just took longer than it needed to be. I kept on messing up. But once they're both down, take the elevator back up and here we'll meet the Harbinger. And okay, hear me out here, all right? Don't get upset because I know it's wrong and it's not true. But it's been a long time since I played Halo. I played 4 and 5 when it first released and that's it. Never kept up with it. Never did the stories. I was a huge fan of 3. And once 4 and 5 came out, I... You know, I lost interest. I, I did not like those games whatsoever. So my lore is a little bit behind. But first time playing through the this campaign, does this not look like a female elite? Like, it's purple. It has the little, little floppy things on her mouth. She's purple. You guys see it, right? Like, if, if there was a non-Halo fan who's never played Halo, and you kind of showed the two, they could be like, and you said that's a female one, and that's a male, I think people would be like, oh yeah, yeah, I, yeah, you know, that makes sense. But I know it's wrong, please don't hate me. I know it's wrong, I know it's bad, it's not lore. I thought, I kind of, I kind of saw the comparison. I just want to throw it out there to everyone. We got stun locked, and then we get our shit kicked in, and that completes the level. The next level is the Spire. It's a pretty simple level. There ain't really too much to it. But the first thing you want to do is go to the left hand side and there should be some sleeping grunts and they should be next to some ghosts. Just steal a ghost and make your way to the top of this cliff. And then I made my way over to the top of the Forerunner building. Here we're going to encounter our first Banish Hunters. And besides from the Chieftains, these are the hardest mini bosses. I want to call them mini bosses. But these guys are a pain in the ass. These hunters are really tough. They have an automatic cannon that if you get caught in it, will kill you instantly. And those rounds track. These guys aren't so bad since we can just snipe them up top. Just keep rocket juggling them. There are enemies to the right of you that will take some pop shots as well as a sniper brute. Uh, deal with them first. And this one, it's really just... Just take your time and shoot the hunters. They can't really shoot you up here. They'll try to, but their cannons are really easy to dodge. And if you can get them in that little like circle area to the left and right, they won't really move out of them. And that will make them a lot easier to kill. Uh, once you deal with the hunters, it's time to open up the lift and we're gonna make our way inside. Then you'll meet Adjutant Resolution. He'll become your friend and he'll help you out. He'll open a teleporter and then a bridge. Until you want to shut down the spear, he then unfriends you, and now you have to fight him. And this boss is the easiest boss in the game. There's really not too much to it. All you gotta do is hide behind the pillars and shoot his arms. Uh, once one of his arms are off, if you need health, go up to him and you can give him a hit to get your health back. Repeat this process four times, and then once he has no arms, he'll do like a giant super laser beam like he's Iron Man. But stay behind the pillar and take care of him. This guy is super easy. I give him one breath. So once Adjutant Resolution is down, it's the start of our next level, Pelican Down. And before I start this area, we're on this island. I want to call it an island, but there's no water. It's just floating in space. So this little area, do you still call it an island or do you call it something else? I still want to say an island, but I'm not too sure. I don't know. It's just, It was just bugging me for the longest time. I was thinking about it. But anyways, so our main objective is to destroy three anti-aircraft guns on this level. So the first ones we're going to take care of are the ones behind us, the two closest to each other. Just because they have a security system and before we're able to destroy them, we have to activate the lift up and take down their security. So grapple our way to the first tower. On the ridge to the right hand side, we get a clear view of the enemies. And if you look in the cave, there's already two more banished hunters. Uh, but these guys are pretty easy. But first, deal with all the enemies outside of the cave. No nothing crazy, some elites, jackals. 
once all of them are taken care of, you can just shoot inside the cave to take care of the hunters. These guys won't really leave the cave until you get too close. So I just stayed back and popped them off. And then when I felt like I could move up, I got on top of the anti-aircraft gun and the one will walk out and you can just give them a few shots. These ones are pretty easy. Now on the right hand side, there are sniper jackals, which I didn't see. And here I get sniped. So now I want to play a game with, it's called, when was my last save? So. We have A, was it a few seconds ago on the clip? Is it B, start of the level? Or C, is it back at adjutant resolution boss fight? I'm gonna give you guys a second to think of where it is. And if you guess C, you're fucking right. It took me all the way back to this boss fight. Why wouldn't it save when the next mission starts? When I'm landed, when there's no enemies? Like it doesn't make any fucking sense it's so random these checkpoints that it pisses me off so if this happens to you once you get started on pelican down end the game and load back in this will save it and you will start at the beginning of the level i shouldn't have to do that but fuck me right i don't know it just gets so fucking annoying trying to figure out the save system anyways go back and deal with those snipers first enter the gun and destroy that can now it's time to make our way to the second gun the next anti-aircraft gun you can also get on top of the ridge uh the uniqueness for this gun is there's a few ghosts but if you stay back far enough you can just shoot rockets at them they sort of kind of dodge out of the way but they don't really do anything so once again just snipe the enemies take your time deal with the ghosts uh this tower is definitely easier than the hunter tower but it's so much fun to watch the ghosts fly yeah activate the lift and destroy her second tower uh one more to go so now we just gotta make our way to the first tower uh if you go from the right hand side you can just grapple on this mountain all the way over to the first gun and once you get there you can just jump inside you don't need to deactivate anything destroy that gun and now all three are down so now we have another boss the hand of atriot and it's tovarius tovaris and hyper hyperus 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 i can't if i can say alien names i am terrible at pronouncing the pronunciations if you guys haven't figured that out already Anyways, these guys are pretty hard at first. If you try to take them on normally, like I just tried to snipe them from up top and these guys just weren't going down. But once you know what you're doing, these guys are actually not too bad at all. Uh, the first you want to get on the cliff, uh, rocket the small guys around. You don't really need to. You just want to take care of the guys on the left hand side of where the crash ship is because they can shoot you. Then you want to make your way to the top of your ship Tovarius, Tovarius will shoot his turret up at you, uh, but he's very easy to dodge. Is a scrap cannon. Uh, so first, you want to kill Hyperus, Hyperus, Hyper, Hyperus, hey, the guy in the fucking chopper. Okay, two rockets and you'll kill him. Uh, that was super easy. Now Tovarius is a bit harder. You can rocket juggle him like every other boss. But if you can get him into this room, uh, if you stand on top of the crash ship, he will jump up into this room and he won't go any higher than that and you can just get just the right angle uh for his head to pop out and let me just say that is one, one dope, dope haircut, haircut for a spartan, spartan killer. killer looks, looks like, like a little, little turd fell on, on his head, head. Uh, anyways blast him with the sentinel gun and there you go i'm gonna give them two grunts out of five not too bad at all now make your way to echo and complete pelican down so the next level is the sequence. After taking the pelican off the island landmass, I still want to call it an island. I'm not sure. Anyways, you have to get to the command spear. Encountering the first enemies, I died instantly. So now it's time to play when was my last save? Is it A, beginning of the level? B, the start of Tovaris and Hyperus boss fight? Or C, way back at adjutant resolution boss fight? Take a second to lock in. The answer is B, back at the fucking boss fight. It's not that far back, but thank God. But still, fuck me, right? I, def I defeated them again. I got in the pelican, and as soon as you start the level, end the game and load back in. This will guarantee you a save. I shouldn't have to do it, but that's the way I found for it to actually save. 
Moving up, there are some enemies on the ledge. There are a few elites, nothing we haven't dealt with before. We get to the command sphere and the weapon says it's locked. Now we have to travel all across the map to get these sequences from the spires. There's four in total, and this is my least favorite level of the game so far. It's just so spread out, and if you're trying to rush, you gotta grapple everywhere. I just think it gets a bit annoying. So I then grapple to the side of the bridge and here we encounter our first Banshees. Now the Banshees are, are more just annoying than they are hard. If you just try to grapple past them, they'll come and, and start shooting at you, but they're really easy to oh, deal no. with because they just travel in a straight line. Sometimes they do a little loop-de-loop, -loop oh, no. but heading to the first tower, closest to us, just grapple as fast as you can. There is a Spartan Core you can grab along the way. And then once you're at the first spire, just get on top. There is a jump pack brute and just take care of them first. And then you can just start shooting the rest of the enemies underneath. Uh, there is a glitch I found doing this level. Um, with the rocket launcher, all the enemies go flying and the door won't unlock until, the, until all the enemies are dead. But even if there's no enemies in sight, it still is locked. And I don't know if it's because there was still one enemy somewhere, if one glitched, I have no idea, but it just wouldn't unlock. I looked everywhere. I looked high, I looked low, but there, there was no enemies. I even went to another area and killed some of the enemies there just to see if it would work and nothing. Uh, so I just kind of stood around. Uh, I find that sooner or later, the door will just unlock. It's just super fucking annoying when you complete it. And you have to stand around with a thumb up your ass waiting for the door gods to let you in. Just super annoying. Anyway, time for the next uh, fire. I did capture a fob just so I could get a mongoose because at this point I was kind of tired of grappling everywhere. You don't have to do this. So speeding my way through banished territory, I was going probably 75 instead of 50. And they sent out the banished police. I crashed my goose, but I still managed to get away after an epic jump. I then grappled my way to the cliff, but they sent out banshees after me and they put an end to my crime spree. I grappled to the next tower and the quirk of this tower is there's a, a few ghosts. Once again, just snipe them out. And I feel like I've been saying snipe a lot in this playthrough. Pretty soon I'm gonna have to change my gamer tag to XX Snipe Town if I keep it up. But really, it's all kind of the same thing. You get on top, you snipe them. Like, what else can I put? After dealing with the ghosts, we can now enter the second tower and complete it. Time for the third tower. Nothing exciting happens again to the third tower. Uh, the third tower will deal with our first wraith of the campaign, and these guys don't do anything. Uh, they can shoot you up here on this cliff, but they don't really move out of the way. Uh, very easy to take care of. Uh, once you get on top of this cliff, though, we encounter our first sentinels as well. And out of all the enemies, besides like the mini bosses, these guys are the biggest bitch to deal with. These are harder than the elites and brutes combined. I hate these flying motherfuckers. Uh, one, they have shields, and two, they have shock rifles, so they're pretty much snipers. And when you try to shoot them, they fly around you like some fucking fly you can't kill and just buzz around as it smirks and flips you off as it flies by. The easiest way to deal with them is the sentinel beam. It tears through their shields and kills them pretty quickly, but they will kill you instantly if you pop out. So, and that goes for any area. As soon as they're sentinels, that's like top priority. After numerous attempts, I finally got them and I started to snipe. I mean, plink. Uh, yes, plink is another word for snipe. I googled it and it's kind of fun to say plink. Anyways, plink the race and the ghost from the top of the cliff. The race can shoot you. Uh, very easy to dodge. You can also get to the other side of the cliff and shoot from that way. And once all the enemies are clear, we complete tower three. Uh, I once again capture another fob just to get another mongoose because the last spire, if you're doing it the way I did it, is a hall to get to. And I didn't want to grapple all the way over there. But I did make a friend. I called him Jim and we headed out. Passing enemies, uh, Jim was putting in mad work actually. Going through enemy territory and passing all the guys as Jim put in work. I then got stuck. I then had to leave Jim behind to fend for himself. Why are we still here? Just to see.
suffer. So I climb the mountain to the last tower, and the last tower has two banished hunters. Uh, phantoms will come and drop off enemies at the last tower, but you can blow them up if you're quick enough. And on top of the clip, pot shot them. Pot shot is another word for snipe people, but it's not as much fun to say as plink. Plink the baddies. For the hunters, you want to try to push them off the cliff is, is the fastest way to kill them. It is kind of a bitch to get them over there, but once they're pushed off, there is another Spartan Core here too. Pick that one up as well. And with that, we completed our last spire. And with that, it's time to go back to the command speed. There will be more enemies, of course. So just blaze the enemies. Blaze is another word for snipe as well. Who would have thought? Just clear out the enemies. Once we get close to the bridge, uh, two more hunters will pop up. But they're pretty close to the edge, so just push them off. Very easy to deal with. And once everyone is taken care of, the bridge lifts up so we can cross. Uh, on the other side of the bridge, there's a, there are a few more elites to fight, but after that, we can open the door. Uh, this is also the last level where you can move around in the open world, so if you need to do anything else beforehand, do it now. But if not, we enter the Nexus. The next area is called the Nexus. The first area are a few small enemies. Take care of them and move your way to the next area. In the next room, there are a few elites in the back to take care of as well. Next room has some jackal snipers some flying monkeys they will shoot rockets so just be careful once you dealt with them and you're about to go through the door more enemies will come through it just rocket the door and make your way to the next area a few enemies in the next room simple stuff really like this Part ain't too bad at all. Now once you get to the big room, there are a few enemies. Uh, there are sniper jackals. And once you get to like the center of the room, some brutes will come from the top left and right. Once that happens, fall back and clear out the room. Uh, the next area is the hardest part of this mission is we now have to deal with the banished hunters inside. Now you can shoot through the doorway, but as soon as you do that, the door will shut. It will teleport you into the area. For some reason, this is the only place that does that. So they really want you to fight the hunters. So starting off the fight, all you want to do, hide behind the wall. Once they get close, just rocket them and push them to the far wall. We don't want these guys anywhere near us. They have the same attacks. They have the cannon. They have the automatic cannon. And if they smack you, it is one hit. When they're low on health, they go Super Saiyan. So the best thing is just to stay behind this wall and let them come to you. And as soon as they get close, rocket them away and rinse and repeat. We just want to keep rocket juggling them until they're low on health. If you grapple onto them, if you need health, if you go straight ahead, they will smack you and just kill you. Uh, the best way to do it is launch them into the air, and as soon as they land, they have a little stun animation. That's the best time to get in a melee attack for them. But this area is pretty hard. Uh, it's gonna take you a few tries. It took me a while to get this down. But just like every other mini boss fight, once you deal with one, the other one becomes a lot easier. So just take your time, don't be aggressive, stick to the wall, and after defeating them, we can open the vent and slide down. Wait, did you see that? See, I've played this campaign five times now, and every time I could have sworn I saw something in the vent when I was sliding down. And now with the power of editing, I finally found out it's a grunt. Now, I want to know how this grunt got here. What's it, and what, what's his story? What's he doing down here? I need to know who this grunt is, but that will have to wait for a little bit. Make your way down and enter the next room. After that, the next area is the gondola ride. As soon as the door opens, you can shoot one of the sentinels down. Also, if you haven't been using the sentinel gun, I highly recommend it for the gondola ride just because it deals with them super quickly especially once they have shields most of them don't i believe when you're doing the gondola ride but it still takes them out very quickly start the gondola you just want to go to the front and stand there the sentinels don't really shoot at you until you get close enough but with the sentinel beam you can reach them so all you gotta do is go in order to which one is the closest and shoot them out if you're good enough they won't even attack you during this part it's very easy um but i did die so it's it's I, once again time for when was my last save file and fuck it it's at the hunter fight for fuck's sake after defeating the hunters again i made my way to the gondola i activated it 
and then enter the game. This will give you another save point right, right after the Banished Hunter. After the gondola, enter the big room. This room, we need to get three power seeds and they're protected by senses. This part is actually really hard. This took me a long time as well. It shouldn't be that hard, but for me, for some reason, I just couldn't do it. So in this room, there's three doors. I start on the left-hand side. Once you get to the center of the room, three sentinels will spawn. Here, I just run back and go behind the pillar and pick them off. And then once you open the door to the power seed area, there will be two more sentinels. Take them out and take the power seed to the console. To the right-hand side, once you get to the center of the room, there will be four sentinels that will spawn on this side. And once again, I actually headed outside the room to the ramp and you can kind of head glitch them. That made it a lot easier for me than hiding behind the pillars for this one. After you defeat them, once you enter the power seed door, there's again two sentinels, take them out and return the power seed. In the last room, there will be a sentinel to your left and right hand side. And in the middle, there will be one sentinel peeking at you. He doesn't come too close until you get closer to him. So deal with the two in the first room and move on. Once you get to the bridge room, there's uh, two sentinels will spawn in the back. Take them out and then once you grab the power seed, grapple back to the room quickly because two more sentinels will appear afterwards. Once you dealt with them, grab the power seed, bring it back to the console and we can now turn on the lift and that completes the nexus. Taking the lift up will be the next level, the command spear. Starting this level, take the lift and the lift will power off. Two sentinels will spawn, and after you beat them, two more will spawn after that. Take them out and power back on the console. Platforms will appear, so grapple your way to the top of the room. Here are more sentinels will pop out, and we need to grab the power seed for this door. Take out the sentinels, and next we'll have to grab the power seed. Once you grab the power seed, more enemies will spawn. If you can shoot the sentinels out of their pods, it will deal with them a little bit quicker. But if not, just hide behind a column and take them out. Power on the lift and make your way up the ramp. Take out the grunts and then in the next area, there will be a bunch of monkeys flying about. So just rocket them. Behind the door are fighter brutes. So just rocket them away. And now you have a choice. You can either A, clear out all the enemies in this area. Or B, you can just rush to the teleporter in the back of the room. We don't need to power it on or anything, so we can just rush to the back of the teleporter and just make our way to the next area. I didn't feel like fighting them, so I took the ladder. Afterwards, there's more monkeys, clean them out, and grapple to the next area. Here I just rush, and without needing a power seat at every fucking door, you can get through levels pretty quickly. Take the lift up. If you rush through, two brutes will follow you up the lift, so just keep that in mind. The next area, I also just rushed through it. At this point, I believe it was three in the morning and I was really tired of fighting these enemies. So in this room, you can just rush past as well. This level, you can speed run pretty quick once you get used to it. Uh, by the end of this level, I was speed running this so quick that even Usain Bolt would be impressed by my speed. Just stay close to the walls and don't go too high. The Sentinels will snipe you. So I would say mid height in the room is fine and swing into the last teleporter. Now it's time for the boss. Once again, we face Adjutant Resolution. And as the weapon points out, he brings some friends, uh, more Sentinels. Take out the gun and two Sentinels will appear. You must deal with the Sentinels first or they'll just snipe you. My best advice is to take out one and run around the giant middle call. For some reason, the Sentinels will go to this specific area and just hang out on the ground. I don't know what they're doing, like taking a nap or something. I'm not too sure, but it makes it a lot easier easier than them flying about. But just as before, it's the same boss, just with sentinels. Just stay behind the big calm. If you're using the smaller columns on the outer side of the boss area, he will lower them. Uh, so it's it's best just to stay at the big calm because he can't lower that down. And that's it. Once we defeat them, we take the lift up. Now the next area are gonna have two sniper brutes in the back, as well as some grunts. Take them out, and as soon as you do that, two phantoms are gonna come and it's kind of like a little mini boss area these guys are super easy to deal with just hide behind the pillars and destroy the phantoms doesn't take much and then after that we have completed the level blade master shows up and snatches echo from the pelican and i feel like smashing the fucking flight controls is not the best option to capture him but he probably knows more than i do so good for him we then open a portal echo gets bit slapped and it's on to our next level 
repository. Repository actually means a place, room, or container where something is stored or deposited in, which I didn't know. I thought it was kind of cool. Now enter the main room. You can do this normally, or a quicker option is to grapple on the right hand side all the way up to the ceiling. Grapple on the pillars all the way to the back of the room and enter the next area. Here you have to take out the sentinels. If you don't, they'll come into the next area and you'll have to fight them then. So take your time here. Take the right, two more sentinels will pop up. Deal with them and enter the bridge area. Enter the next room and there's going to be four sentinels that pop up. Two will just, they'll fly immediately back to the back of the room and two more sentinels will be on your left. This is also where if you didn't deal with the sentinels beforehand, they will now come and fight you as well. I ran back to the door we just came through and take them out one at a time. Once you activate the console, a cutscene will play and once it's done, the door will open and there'll be a few enemies behind it. More enemies in the next room as well as some sentinels. Then you just make your way to the hallway, take care of the guys and move along. Now for this room, you have to go stand at the window and take in the sights. The door won't open until you look at the pretty scenery. But once you've done that, the door will unlock and we can proceed. Next room has more enemies, same old, same old. Uh, if you quickly shoot the door, you can get a bunch of them. But other than that, head to the next room. And here you want to just go to the center of the room and go back to the doorway. Because there's a jetpack brute hiding behind the column. And two sentinels will come in once you get to the middle of the room. There's now on the left and right hand side, there will be a bunch of enemies leading to the next room. You only need to go one way, so I would take the left because it has less enemies than the right hand side. In the next corridor, in the middle, there will be an elite. Take care of them. And in the next room, there's going to be a bunch of guys hiding behind these columns. So just rocket them out and then proceed to the next area. You then activate the console and another cutscene will play. We then take the lift up. There will be enemies that will come through the door. Take them out. Next area, get on top of the platform. And then we can just clear out this room. This room needs two power seeds to open the door. From the entrance, I took the right side or if you're like at the door, the left hand side, you can see which one I'm taking. Once you enter the door, you head down, there will be a bunch of sniper jackals. Take them out and in the main room, there's a jump pack route and a chieftain. You can stay in this hallway and unlike the hunter boss fight, it won't teleport you in there. So here, I just sat with the sentinel and rocket launcher and just picked at them. They won't come after you in this hallway for some reason. I don't know, the chieftain doesn't understand how to be an enemy and he just gets frustrated and will hide behind the call. Uh, you can use the sentinel beam on his gravity hammer if that's popping out, it still does damage to him. But this area is really easy. Once you get to the middle of the room, there's gonna be two sentinels that pop out. Take care of them and the door should open. Grab the power seed and teleport back. Plug the power seat in, and now we're going to take the other side. In the next room, you can go left or right. If you go right, there's just a bunch of flying monkeys, but these are optional. I don't even know why they're there. So you want to go to the left-hand side. And once in the hallway, in the, in the main room, are more chieftains. And same as before, you just want to stay in the hallway. Just snipe them with the sentinel gun. Take them down and once you get to the center again, two more sentinels will come out. After grabbing the power seat and teleporting back, we can now power up the machine. After the cutscene, we take the lift up and we enter the next room. Another cutscene will play and afterwards the door will open and there will be a chieftain. It's just a timed area so you can just hide, just avoid them. And after a certain amount of time, more enemies will come through. Take the door that the enemies popped out of. Once you go through the door where the enemies popped out of, you can just grapple your way to the end of the level. And that completes the repository. Once you teleport out of the repository, we're now at the road. The road is a super easy level. You can take the tank if you want, but here I just grappled to the left hand side and just ran all the way there. There will be enemies that spawn on the left hand side if that's the way you go, but I just ran past them. Stay on the high ground and let the grapple do the work for you. There is an area where there's that gap. It won't let you grapple onto it for some reason. Like it's almost like an out of bounds thing. So you're gonna have to 
actually get on the road. But once you're past that, you can grapple back to the left hand side and just keep running. Once you get to the House of Reckoning, there's no enemies there. So you can just open the door and that completes the road. The next level is the House of Reckoning. And this is where I thought I was going to have the biggest challenge out of this playthrough. The House of Reckoning is a gauntlet of enemies that come after you wave after wave. And the only way to proceed is by defeating all of them. The name is more scary than the level itself. It's actually not the hardest. So first we want to get to the first arena. The main plan here is we're going to get on top of the main building. Just because no enemies can get you up here. You can also see every door that the enemies come out from and the only thing we really have to worry about is them chucking grenades up here and there will be a jump pack route on the last wave who will pop up and fly up here but after that we just snipe the enemies the first wave they will come from the front of you and it's a bunch of grunts and jackals the second wave they'll come from the two doors behind you as well as the right hand side and then the final wave there are some brutes that will come out and some sniper brutes as well but once we take care of all the enemies we can we then can to proceed to the next arena. The next arena, I felt a little defeated because there was no roof to snipe from. And this is where I kind of got worried because this is where we're going to have to fight the banished hunters. I was defeated at this point. I thought all hope was lost. I found an even better spot and that was in the roof. You can actually get on top of the roof in this area. Head to the corners and enemies can't attack you from here. Besides from a few grunts, but they have to be right underneath you. The jackals will shoot you with the kneeler. But the don't but the needles can't make it all the way over towards you so here we just gotta pick off the enemies first wave is a bunch of jackals and grunts now the grunts for this wave they are suicide grunts so if you're on the ground you want to get high up or blast them away the second wave is gonna have some fighter brutes as well as some of the sniper brutes they can get you but they're super easy and then for the third wave we have the banished hunters stay in the corner and they can't get you you can also swing to the other side of the room Room, which I recommend and here they'll just stand in this little area and you can just take shots at them and it didn't take me too long at all I was I was actually really surprised that it was this simple but you know what I'll take it I don't care now it's time for the third arena and this is the final boss of the level blade master now his name seems intimidating but he is also one of the easiest bosses in the game oh oh shit I just died oh oh no where do I start oh fuck make your way back and it's time to fight for real this time. Use the threat sensor and shoot it at the root. Now this next trick I also came up with and I'm probably the first in the world. I call it Blade Master's Hopscot. See there's a hole on the left and right hand side of this room so all we want to do for this fight is get him to jump over the hole once and once he does that you want to jump to the other side of where he just jumped. He will then proceed to jump back towards you and you jump to the other side of where he's at. Like 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 hopscotch back you jump and back and uh, just then use the sentinel gun and just beam him when he's up in the air uh if he collide he sometimes will fall down uh so you just have to wait for him to get back up and once you do enough damage to him he will turn invisible and and run off here just stick to the hole you'll hear when he's coming and then when, once he pops out you can just repeat the process and then after that blade master becomes dead master i couldn't come up with anything there anyways i'm trying my best all right i give blade master only one day. Once you get the pattern down, he is dead simple. Now it's time to take on Eshram. Now Eshram is not too bad at all. The first part of his boss fight is the hardest. He has a scrap cannon, so you gotta stay close to the walls. And once you deal enough damage to him, he will then get a shield where you can't hurt him. You then have to wait for the power cell door to open, and then we're gonna have to destroy it before you can do any damage to him. So here we just wanna rocket propel him away, and we just wanna keep our distance. We use the hallways and the corridors, because the scrap cannon once it gets you it deals massive damage grappling is also one of your best friends here once he gets close grapple away and rocket juggle him push him to the back we're gonna have to repeat this process over time before we can get to his next phase so grapple around take your time here once he gets close push him back or grapple away once all the power cells are destroyed he then takes out his gravity hammer and this is when the fight becomes super easy he'll charge you 
use the rocket and he will go flying and you just want to keep him away from you he it's a one hit too uh he does have a lunge but i found him to be really easy once you get to the second part we defeat him and i'm gonna give him i'm gonna give him two grunts the first part is annoying mostly just waiting for the power cells to open but once you get to a second phase it's so easy and with that we complete complete the level and here we go the last level silent auditorium and let me just say this is the hardest level of the game by far this level is an absolute bitch and it took me so long to complete this one uh, this is where i had the toughest time besides from uh, some of the bosses there's just so much going on here and the checkpoints are by far the worst in this level than anywhere else in the game so Starting off the level, there's already a bunch of enemies. You want to grapple to the top of the pillar to the right hand side of you and you can deal with all the enemies up there. There's two turrets you can shoot from there and after that it's just taking care of the little guys. Uh, you do have to clear all the enemies to activate the door and once we go through, head down the hallway and there will be a few more enemies. Uh, you, you have to grab the power seed in this little hallway over here to open the door. Uh, not very far, I don't even know why it's here. And we continue on. And the next fight, we get to fight the hunters indoors again. Oh boy. And these guys. These guys are so much fun to fight. I had so much fun the second time around fighting these guys in the first ones. And you'll see what I mean in a second. Once again, if you shoot from the hallway, the door will shut. And it will teleport you in the room again so no cheating and what we want to do is the same as before we, we want to rocket juggle them stay behind the wall and crate once they get close you want to push them away and for some reason i feel like these guys are a lot harder for some reason i think i was just tired at this point there are also a bunch of fusion coils in the room so if they get close to them you can blast them with that uh you use the grapple grapple away if they get too close, you just want to stay on the opposite side of the room. Deal damage nice and slowly. No rush here, right? But after defeating one, the other will go Super Saiyan. Deal with him and we can continue on. Now it's time for the next room. In this room, there's a bunch of enemies and there's a lot of grunts. These grunts are also the suicide type, so you don't want to get too close. And... Uh, fuck. Alright, where do I start? Oh, fuck me. All right, one more time and I should be good. Well, oh, come on, man. All right, we'll do it one more fucking time. We should be fine, right? After completing it for the third time, uh, take out the grunts and then there's a few brutes and elites in the back and oh my fucking god. Fourth time is fine. So take out the grunts and in the back, there's a few elites and brutes and oh my fucking god. Complete the hunters once again and go back to the room and Fuck you, fucking god damn it. Like, what the fuck? I defeated these guys, and I've died so many times here, and completed the room so much. Why can't I get a save? At this point, I was actually defeated, I, and I really wanted to quit. I wanted to give up, to be honest. I wanted to crawl into a hole and die. I've got so far, and tried so hard, but at my lowest point, but then the sky opened, and a bright light shined through. I then saw the Master Chief, and he looked down upon me. In amazement, I asked, what do I do, Chief? He was silent for a second, but with the gift of his voice, he spoke, and his words were, get good. And with the word of our Lord, by golly, did I get good. I got so good, I blasted past the hunters, and fuck. Day three, I tried again. Dealing with the suicide grunts, I got back to the room and died instantly. But this time, for some unknown reason, I finally got a checkpoint, thank god. Thank you, Master Chief. Once you get to this room and you make your way to the center, Sentinels will pop up. So first what we want to do is stay at the back of the wall and, de and deal with the enemies on the left and right hand side. Also on the right hand side is a sniper if you want to use it. You can also hop on top of these pillars for a better view. More Sentinels will show up in the back. Once past this area, activate the bridge 
and there will be another cutscene. They'll talk for a while and the bridge will act. Here we meet Adjutant Resolution again, but he's now our friend again. And with that, grapple your way to the elevator and take the slow ride up. It's now time to face the final boss, the Harvey. Now starting off, she will hide behind her shield and some of her goons will come through the doors. You want to stay on top of the level and deal with the first ways. There's some monkeys, a few brutes, not too bad at all. Now for the Harbinger, she likes to teleport around a lot and I find the best way to avoid her attacks is just keep moving and jumping. Her melee won't be able to get you there. And then she has this Pikachu electric shock attack and, and this attack will one shot you. They trace and it has like an area effect. So the best way to avoid this is get to the area where there's the bridge and it kind of like sticks out of the room. Hide behind the columns and once you see the little balls of spark above her you just want to hide behind the cover. For this fight your best friend is going to be the sentinel beam just because of how much she teleports around so you just want to keep on shooting her. Once you get her low on health she'll fall to the ground and you just give her a smack uh, to get your health back up. She will then retreat into the, her shield again and the next wave will happen. You just grapple around until more enemies spawn. Use the columns for cover as well. Uh, more monkeys, uh, more grunts, brutes, nothing really hard. We then again have to fight the Harbinger for the second time. Light the bitch up and again give her another smack. The third wave is the hardest, a lot harder. There's elites that will come through with some monkeys and then there's also a chieftain. You just want to deal with the little guys first and then we just have to fight the chieftain. All you want to do is rocket propel him back and then melt him with the sentinel beam. Remember that shock grenades will stun him and they're your friend here. And once you beat the chief, Harbinger will come out for the last time. She really likes her electrical attack here so make sure you're behind cover use the sentinel beam the final time give her a smack and that's it i give this five grunts not for the boss i give them to the fucking hunter because that took me so long to complete last boss once you get to it is really not bad at all i would say those two without a checkpoint were the hardest part of this game but with that the final cutscene plays and our achievement unlocks we get a nice hundred gamer score for our troubles i really didn't find this challenge to be too bad at all it's it's hard. You will die a lot, but it's not unbeatable. This is my first lasso I've ever done, and I always heard things about how hard they were, and it's honestly really not too bad. The older games might be a lot harder, but this one was not too bad. I know I'm god tier, and I don't want to brag or sound like like an asshole, but I thought it would be a lot more hard than it was. But it was fun. So let's see here. So wh what type of armor do I unlock from for doing this? Probably something epic, right? Oh, a nice legendary skin, perhaps? Maybe a, a cool new effect for my Sparta. Uh, no. You get fucking nothing for this achievement. Because what's pride and accomplishment when you spend it in a store for 20 fucking dollars? Like, really? You can give us anything? A single piece of armor? Like, you're gonna release 60 fucking different skins throughout the year? And you can give us one cool thing for completing the game on Lasso? Like, why couldn't we get something? A cool armor skin? Are y'all that greedy? Like, you sprinkle dog shit commons throughout the campaign that people will never use once something cooler comes out? in the store. I know you can add something for this achievement, but one armor set is too much. What, do you think it's gonna stop you from buying things in the store? Like, oh, I got my one armor. I'm never gonna even look at the store again. Like, really? You could add one thing. Something cool. Like, fuck, I would take an emblem, you know? I would take a little, little weapon dangle for my troubles. But no. No, you get, you get fucking nothing. All you get is the achievement. But with that, that's my little rant. It, it just irked me. Like, like one skin, one armor, a cool path, you know? What happened to the good old days of Halo 3 when you complete achievements and you got armor skins? Like, but I know that's in the past. But I, I really hope you guys like this video. It took me a lot of work to complete. It took me about 20 hours to do the campaign. Uh, I had a blast doing it. Uh, the editing was an absolute bitch though. This is like my first big video. And my god, did it take a long time. Hopefully this helps. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you guys tried this achievement yet. Tell me your stories about Lasso. Also, if you would please, 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 please. 
kindly drop a like and a subscribe that would mean a lot to me i also streamed this entire playthrough on twitch so if you wanted to watch the entire playthrough i don't know what people would want to see if they wanted to see me die 40 fucking times but on my twitch you can see it all the link will be down in the description so come chill and watch me raid you know have some fun and give some recommendations on the next challenge i should do but with that that's that's it thanks for watching i hope you guys have a good night also, Merry Christmas.